Paramount Plus and Peacock reportedly in talks to join forces amid an increasingly competitive streaming landscape. This coming amid several potential strategic options that the entertainment company is pursuing, all according to a report here from the Wall Street Journal. Here with more on the path forward for not only Paramount, but also several of the other media giants. We want to bring in City Managing Director Jason Bazinet. Jason, it's great to see you again. So let's start on that journal report here from last week. Just give us your assessment just of where Paramount specifically stands. And when we talk about consolidation, whether or not it's inevitable that some of these smaller players need to some sort of com combine or bundle up with the larger players in order to better compete. Well, I, I'm in the minority. Uh, if you speak to most of our institutional investors, they would say that consolidation really makes no sense. And and there's good reasons for the buy side to say that. I understand why they draw that conclusion because we've already seen many, many rounds of consolidation with Disney Fox. We saw Warner Brothers Discovery. We saw CBS Viacom. And, and none of them, none of those deals sort of was the elixir that allowed them to generate copious amounts of profits and streaming. So the buy side says, we're sort of done with consolidation. Even if we see more consolidation, it's not gonna help any of these incumbent firms. And I think it's just dead wrong. We need another round of consolidation. It will help these incumbent firms compete with the likes of Netflix. How, how will that consolidation then, from your purview, change the pricing mechanisms that these companies put forward to consumers? You know, I don't think it's so much about uh, pricing per se. I would say that we we went through a chapter, I'll call it 2019 through 2021-ish, where it was just give away the product, try and you know, get as many subs as you can to get scale. Mm -hmm. And we're now in a chapter where a lot of these media companies are saying, look, we can't generate um, losses forever in streaming. We're going to take pricing up. So if we see another round of consolidation, I think pricing will go up for the video streaming apps. But it would go up anyway. What, what we really are, are focused on is more about the cost savings that you get with consolidation and, and, and equally critical, just rationalizing the number of apps that are out in the marketplace. We just have too many video apps. Yeah, Jason, talk to us just a little bit more about what that cost savings perspective, what that's going to do, how much will it really save some of these uh, media players in the long run? Yeah, typically it runs, you know, a low single digit percentage of the cost structure of the pro forma firm. So it's billions of dollars, no matter which combination you envisage. And so with that in mind, I mean, we're already hearing as well that there's going to be some potential pushback from the DOJ if there's more of this consolidation effort that goes forward. Where, where do you think that companies will have to strike the right tone in their messaging to regulators as well? Well, I don't know. It's... Um... It's pretty interesting because the, the regulators have a propensity to almost be too backward looking, right? And so um, there certainly is some risk that you'll get regulatory pushback. I can tell you the way the institutional investors are looking at it is the, the real competition is really from the tech giants, right? That are getting into the streaming business, whether that's an Apple or an Amazon. Um, and so the buy side doesn't really look at consolidation as a constraint, but Sometimes the regulators tend to be a, a little bit backward looking, right? And, and, will, and might say there's too much consolidation. But I think that would be the wrong answer. Jason, uh, we, we had the chance to have Paramount CEO Bob Backish on recently and told yep. Yahoo Finance on the company's views to meeting consumer needs in the media landscape. Here's what he had to say. I want to get your reaction on the other side. Sure. Broadcast is key. Broadcast provides you uh, wide reach. Um, and you see the numbers on CBS this year. Uh, and I think all leagues are looking at the power of broadcast and wanting to be part of that. But we also, you know, we do eliminate. We use broadcast in the fastest growing streaming service in terms of net ads since launch, Paramount Plus, to provide that uh, choice for consumers. And that is the root, uh, and that is success in today's media landscape. Um, frankly, both parts are important to serving audiences. And so just want to get your reaction to that as well here with the, the kind of additive that, you know, this could readjust perhaps some of the margins that we've even seen or come to expect over the years. Uh, there have been some activist campaigns that have even targeted uh, Disney, for instance, on making sure that they can achieve at what everybody's chasing, Netflix-like margins. Uh, so I want to get your reaction there and, and what this all trickle through uh, all means in terms of the trickle through to margins as well. 
Well, that Netflix's streaming margins are about 24% is what they're targeting. Um, Disney publicly said on their last earnings call that they're aiming for double digit streaming margins. Um, those are nowhere close to the, the old margins of the linear ecosystem where you'd see, you know, 30, 35, 40% um, uh, margins. So I don't think anyone is expecting this to go back to the old margin structure, but, you, but as you rightly pointed out, sort of Netflix has now established best in class in the streaming side. And I think for, for a lot of these companies, um, including Disney, you know, they're all still losing money on their streaming business. I mean, Warner, Warner Brothers would take exception with that because they include the legacy linear HBO business in their streaming definition technically. But, but I think on a true streaming business, everyone's losing money in streaming and that, that's what needs to get fixed. Yeah, Jason, speaking of Warner Brothers Discovery, we're going to be getting quarterly results from that company here in just a few days. You mentioned debt, you mentioned subscriber numbers here. What is the one thing or the one or two things that you think is the most important for investors to focus on in that report? You know, I think the most important thing that the buy side is focused on right now is free cash flow generation coming out of Warner Brothers uh, with, with the singular goal of paying off their debt. Right, the, the market is saying that, that Warner Brothers has too much debt um, relative to the trajectory of its business. And so it's all about how much EBITDA do you generate, how much of that EBITDA is converted to free cash, and how much of that free cash flow can be used to pay down debt. And that's gonna be the story on Warner Brothers probably for another two years. City Managing Director, Jason Bazinet. Jason, a pleasure to get some of your time and insights. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you.